Um, my name is Amudan, and I am part of Drupal Marupakkam. We and we have been organizing this Marupakkam online film screening since April. After uh, the lockdown was in, imposed due to Corona, COVID uh, nineteen, and this time today we are having discussion with uh, Mr. Amshan Kumar, a veteran filmmaker and film festival activist and teacher and writer from uh, based in Chennai. We are showing us a film, uh, Yalpanam Dakshinamurti, Music Beyond the Boundaries. And the, the, the discussion uh, will be around that film. Of course, uh, we will can have an uh, intense discussion about his filmmaking and his uh, the way he looks at film, all the things. So let me start uh, with Mr. Amshan Kumar. Uh, sir, can you explain uh, like how uh, did you become a filmmaker? Can you just say, like, how 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 you started as a filmmaker? Just one minute. Another person, it seems, wants to join us from London. Yes. Just one minute. One minute. Yes. Hello. Adali, erku me parle amul ke Zoom meet Zoom meet un border kena. Hello. Mail la mail la. Mail letter. Zoom it in Botter Kumbar. Subject letter. Net. Okay, okay, right, right. Um, sorry for the break. <clears throat> because a person who is connected with film, this film <clears throat> is contacting me from London. He wants to join. So I gave him the pass code and all that. Actually, basically, I am a writer. I started writing a long time ago. <clears throat> And I was writing mostly on uh, films and uh, literature. I used to see a lot of films in the film societies. And uh, not with the intention of becoming a filmmaker, but to understand cinema, I was an activist in uh, film society functionings. That way I saw a lot of uh, international films. I was, I mean, I'm a resident of uh, Trichy. Uh, there is a small town, not like uh, a big city like uh, Kuala Lumpur or Chennai, where you have many opportunities uh, to see so many films from abroad and also see quality films which are not shown in the theatres. Because in those times, the films, the only way to see films was uh, not even television, only theatre. But theatre, uh, in the commercial theatre, they won't show you uh, films of... Uh, um, from Europe, from Latin America, none of those things. Even from Kerala or Madhur um, Gopalakrishnan film or from uh, Canada, Vinishka Saravari, those films also won't be shown in the theatre. They would be shown only in the film societies. So because uh, film society was functioning in Tirchi, I could see so many films from uh, other countries. That way and understood that cinema is not uh, something which we are seeing all the time in the theatre. Uh, they are formal like uh, uh, regular run of the mill kind of a film. Cinema has so many dimensions, so many possibilities, so many realities uh, based on life, based on books, and so many things like that. And uh, um, they were realistic in the first place, which attracted me towards uh, uh, cinema, uh, neo realism, and uh, social realism, and all that. That way, I became interested in the film seeing. I wanted to understand the film aesthetics. So that way I read the books written by film theorists uh, like Andre Barzain, Eisenstein, um, uh, like so many of them, John, um, uh, Rudolf Hanheim, like that. So it went uh, side by side, reading on films, seeing films. Later on, I migrated to Chennai. Uh, during that time, I was working in a bank, like uh, both of you. Then uh, slowly 
and then opportunity came for me to make a, an advertisement film. Because at the time I had written a book on film appreciation. That is the first of its kind in uh, Tamil. Because most of the time people write books on how to make a film <clears throat> or the history of cinema. The, but they don't write about uh, how to appreciate cinema. That is a, a rare thing uh, for uh, <clears throat> people to uh, concentrate on and also rare to write about. <clears throat> Since I'm a film society product, I wrote about uh, how to appreciate cinema. And that got the attention of not only the um, film uh, going uh, film buffs who are frequenting uh, film societies, but also uh, industry people, strangely industry people, because they also understood that uh, cinema can be looked at this way instead of the usual kind of uh, uh, reading film reviews in magazines and all that. There is another way of looking at uh, cinema uh, through film aesthetics. So they also liked it. And somehow they thought that I could make a film. <clears throat> I had no tutoring in uh, filmmaking, but because I had written so thoroughly about uh, world cinema, they were under the impression that I could make films also, but I had not visited even film sets often, maybe one or two. That too in connection with the writing of the book. And uh, uh, just out of, whenever I used to uh, go to Chennai, I used to go to uh, some film studios and watch it out of curiosity, some film uh, shootings, not other than that, not much more than that. Uh, so with that uh, knowledge, I was uh, having in the practical knowledge about cinema, but the people who had read it, uh, they thought that I could make. So at the time there was, uh, I mean, uh, television had come in, in the 1990s, um, television, uh, color television had come uh, because of the Asian games that took place in uh, India, color television came in and the color television opened up uh, avenues for uh, good TV commercials. Until then the TV commercials, were uh, very uh, sober and uh, very um, monotonous. Suppose there is a, um, uh, a commercial TV, I mean, it's, um, uh, advertisement film about uh, a tablet to cure a headache. If you see the film, you would get a headache. That kind of a film they were making for uh, uh, cinema theaters. But uh, when uh, advertisement uh, arrived, uh, television, it was very different. It was a very visual kind of uh, thing they employed in uh, TV commercials, not direct hard selling, but through uh, so many visual tricks, visual knacks, they were trying to uh, market their products. Well, I will tell you one instance that there is this, um, one big uh, um, television set, um, the, this thing, what is that? Um, the Onida. Onida, they were uh, marketing. But in the Vanita advertisement, what would happen? Uh, a devil would come and uh, break the Vanita TV set. Instead of um, promoting the TV set, the devil would come and break it because the byline is, uh, the neighbor is uh, envious of the uh, TV set and the neighbor comes through like a devil and he breaks it. Owner's pride and neighbor's envy. So, there's these kinds of ingenious ways of uh, storytelling, narrating, um, um, marketing the product as well as uh, bringing life into um, your product, your uh, commercial. This aspect uh, I got attracted to. And I also began to see a lot of uh, TV commercials. And I had the opportunity to go to one agency. And there they were uh, having some product and they had one storyboard kind of, you know, so what, what a storyboard is. A concept that is drawn in so many pictures and uh, through that they negotiated with the uh, filmmaker, they negotiated with the uh, product uh, manufacturer. So it is easy for them to show what they are going to picturize. It's called the storyboard. And they had storyboard idea concept they already had and it did not appeal to me. I was there as a friend I was talking to them. I told them that uh, this does not appear to me. This looks so prosaic. Uh, you, you can't compare it with the uh, TV commercials that are coming, especially from Bombay, where they were making very good films because they had a lot of people from the Pune Film uh, Institute. And uh, those cameramen, uh, they had a better grasp of the medium and they were making very good uh, TV commercials. So I told them that uh, people are uh, seeing those films. And if you see the kind of film that you are uh, going to make, your product may not uh, 
of the compete. And then I, uh, the casual asked, mm -hmm. can you give me a concept? <clears throat> I said, yes. I thought it was a joke and then I gave a concept in two, three days. And it was passed on to the manufacturer of the product. He liked it. So that way the agency also said, your uh, this thing is they like it much more than what we originally had and uh, can you make it and i was uh, sort of uh, surprised that uh, such a invitation is coming uh, then i thought of it why don't we try it since it is coming on its own i said yes then uh, that's how i started making and there were some hiccups initially but i overcame because i had uh, good knowledge of uh, um, not only um, understanding cinema, but also about the making of cinema. I read many books on uh, filmmaking also, about uh, camera editing and all that. So with that, I furthered my understanding of cinema by associating myself with the good technicians, good cameramen, good editors. They were all there, they helped me. With that, I gradually uh, learned the ropes and began to make uh, many films. I also went to uh, Mumbai and associated myself with uh, the good technicians there. That's how I started doing that. And uh, alongside, I was also working in the bank. <clears throat> I was uh, going on leave for months together because uh, to make a film, you have to spend at least 25, 30, sometimes 40 days, even for a 30 second film. So, because it calls for uh, a great craftsmanship, and all that uh, when you make a reduced uh, film. It looks very simple, but uh, a lot of work goes into that. And because of my uh, continuous uh, this thing um, on leave, they asked me to uh, get out of this. Uh, very, very, very polite manner. Why don't you go out of this? Why are you uh, sticking on both? Uh, that was also my idea because I did not want the bank to be put into trouble because of my frequent uh, leave taking. So after that, uh, I said that we had a compromise. I will work for a, a year. And then because to uh, compensate the uh, leave that I had uh, taken from the bank for about a year, I will regularly come and work. And then you uh, evict me. Then you can uh, allow me to go. Now, that's uh, set. Like that for about one year, I didn't um, do anything. I just went to bank. And by the time I came out, uh, there's there no practically any uh, contact with the advertisement filmmaking thing because there were other people and uh, they were doing it all the time. Also, I got bored with uh, advertisements. All the time, we were selling biscuits and chocolates. This is the best biscuit in the world. This is the best chocolate in the world. That kind of thing. Whatever you are trying to say, finally you end up with that, you see. So I didn't want to do that. And before that, I, in 1980, I, there was a theater workshop conducted in Chennai connected by one uh, great uh, theatre personality called the Badal Sarkar, he was a Bengali playwright. And he had a novel way of uh, uh, doing theatre, which he called the third theatre. Basically, third theatre means the first theatre is uh, the folk theatre. The second theatre is what we usually uh, see in the, um, I mean, the proscenium. Third theatre is the kind of theatre which he was doing without props, without mics, and uh, uh, without other paraphernalia, so that kind of a thing. And uh, it was also a uh, production cost was nil, almost nil. And uh, there were only employees, I mean, uh, amateurs were employed in that uh, theater, but they were all dedicated uh, amateurs. They would put in five months, six months of their time to make a play, that kind of uh, devotion there. So the, he conducted one workshop in 1980 in Chennai. I was drawn to that uh, idea of theater because the, my understanding of theater also grew that it is not uh, um, to be read, plays not to be read, but plays to be acted, plays a, a vehicle for performance. So yeah, that, with that idea, I could uh, approach um, Badal Sarkar very well. I could join in the workshop and uh, participated for about uh, 10 days. So when I, uh, after coming out of the bank, when I wanted to do something, I did not want to join uh, mainstream cinema, mainly because um, there they would not take me immediately. And I should have worked in uh, uh, somebody's film as an assistant director in some capacity or another for some years. I did not, I did not want to go and approach anybody. 
because most of the film directors, it is very hard even to approach them, to knock at their door. Leave alone, uh, they are allowing me to join them, to work in their film and all that. So at the time, uh, I, I was also fascinated by the documentary cinema. I wanted to make a documentary. And uh, the first thing that struck me was, I should do something which I already knew, instead of going for a subject which I did not know totally, learning it and then doing it, I should do some uh, a documentary based on uh, what I already knew. So th that way I could launch myself uh, well. And I learned that uh, no uh, documentary film uh, had been made on uh, Badal Sarkar, at, uh, in Badal Sarkar's theatre, called Theatre Theatre. Um, uh, that looked very strange because he was in uh, Calcutta, in Calcutta, there are a lot of activities of uh, documentary filmmaking, but still nobody had made a film on uh, the, his theater. So that triggered me to make a documentary. I went to Calcutta, I got his permission, stayed there for about 10 days, shot the film, and uh, it was then uh, shown in so many places, I went to some film festivals, also shown in the Mumbai International Film Festival and all that. So how did you, yes, sir? Oh, Mr. Amshu Kumar, uh, sorry, I just wanted to inter How did you raise funds for the first film? Uh, for the first film, it was self-funded. Because um, the, the, the thing is, Bal Sarkar was a very well-known personality, one of the great uh, playwrights, one of the great uh, um, theater personalities of India. But he was a rebel. He criticized all the... Um, institutions, Ford Foundations, all that he criticized. Because if you want to approach some funding for a documentary, you let approach institutions like Ford Foundation, um, film uh, corporations, things like that. But he had already opposed them. So there is no way of approaching them to make a, um, a, for a, a film financing. Because they said he is always attacking us. We should we pay money to make a film on him? Because he, he is not in good terms with us. So it is very tough. I approached uh, so many people, but I was mad, you know. I, I was mad that I should make a film about him, no way about it. So uh, I raised money. Um, um, I uh, sold my wife's jewels. She, she, uh, she sold and gave the money to me, uh, to put it properly, because she was also interested in whatever I am doing still now. That way, we collected the money and uh, Made the film. It was shot on film, not on video. It was shot on 16 mm film. So all that money came from myself. And uh, during the post production, some people helped. That came much later. Once they understood that the film had been made, they came. The trickle of money came from other other people. But mostly it was my film. But uh, having made that film, I did not look back because after that I made some 25, 26 films. For all that, the money has come from elsewhere. So that was a very positive thing about it. I would not have made all these films with my money. So the, that way they started reposing faith in my uh, film because I had made this film based on that. I got another uh, film to produce on uh, Bharati, uh, Subramanya Bharati. And the uh, money came from uh, uh, Tamil Association of New Jersey, USA, because they also had the idea to make a film at the, at the same time when I wanted to make a film on Bharati. They also had the idea to make a, a documentary. So we joined together and made the film. That way, we started making films. And uh, some films also I made for NGOs, for, for the developmental activities I made some. For instance, uh, the internet connections given to the villages called the Reaching the Unreached. That was an NGO film. Like that, I made a few NGO films, provided uh, um, I, my, I, uh, philosophy or uh, my ideology uh, is not against uh, their ideology. That kind of a thing. So that's how I was making films. And this film, Arpanam uh, Daksha Murthy, um, it happened very accidentally. Most of the time, I think up on a subject and then approach uh, finance. Sometimes, very rarely, people have a subject on the, with them and they approach me. This film was like that. Um, so Badma Bayer from London, he came and uh, I took him to meet uh, art critic Denuga in Kumbhagonam. There they were talking about uh, the Sri Lankan uh, double player, Arpanam Dashamurthy. 
then um, uh, abdul nawir who is uh, living in london but he was uh, um, uh, sri lankan expatriate he suggested uh, why don't you why don't we make a film because so many people still think about uh, arpan dashamurthy uh, whereas in sri lanka uh, so many people have forgotten it whereas here people still remember him so we owe a duty to make a, a documentary in remembrance of uh, arpan dashamurthy so why don't you make it uh, sir i said okay then i wanted i told him that i would like to listen to his music and i listened to his music i was transported to a different world altogether it was so mesmerizing immediately so, so mesmerizing then i said i will make it but actually at the time when we started making the film there was not much document you can see in the film itself in the opening scene that i start with just three uh, uh, photos of rashamurthy uh, um, as i go along meeting people i collect I was collecting more photos and in the process i was also collecting more recordings of rashamurthy uh, uh, to start with we had only two and a half hours uh, recording of the uh, shamurthy's uh, tabal uh, play but uh, during the course of that uh, eight uh, ten months while i was uh, making the film uh, we contacted so many people from all parts of the world from malaysia from uh, singapore from um canada sri lanka like that from the uh, uk and uh, they, they were all uh, admirers of uh, um yarpan uh, dashamurthy and they had um, the recordings in their private collection so we got uh, all of them and uh, at the time uh, we finished the film there were 26 hours of his uh, music so it's not only a film but also 26 hours of uh, his recording we could uh, have for our uh, this thing so uh, that way we went on with the film and the film got uh, very good reception all over the world uh, it was uh, premiered in uh, uk in london and uh, about 600 700 people uh, um, attended the premiere yes sir when you are making a film about a, a musician how much uh, your mu- knowledge about music is important i have some knowledge about uh, music because i learned music when i was uh, um, young um, i learned uh, uh, violin for about some time i know about the rudiments of carnatic music i am not a musician myself and i did not want to continue myself as a musician also because yeah, it calls for rigorous practice for instance if you want to play violin every day you will have to play violin for about 2 hours otherwise you will be playing abhaswara abhaswara so that kind of thing you know um, my temperament is also not that of a musician i'm basically a writer a filmmaker that kind of a temperament this is vastly different from that of uh, um, a musician's uh, temperament um you know goes uh, largely uh, by the tradition whereas a writer who is not always going by the tradition is against the tradition most of the time and um, i mean uh, he has his own views about uh, so many things whereas um, he knows um, uh, carnatic music you will have to follow a particular style of uh, school uh, go along with that then you will have to embellish yourself in the midst of all these things that's how it is so my temperamentally i was not uh, a musician but uh, my knowledge about music helped me to understand the nuances of uh, tabal playing nuances of uh, carnatic music hmm. this film how is it uh, uh, different from your previous films how is it a continuation from your previous films but i didn't get you how it is uh, this particular film how is it different or similar from your previous films okay like, uh, because this film uh, according to me is very uh, much more, very well uh, the film has a very well developed uh, film language and style okay so so when you look back do you think this film is a, is a, is a, you know is in continuation with your previous films or is it a departure from your previous films or do you think it is a part of your filmography can you say that i think it is only a part of my film making because when i made my film third theater there are i mean uh, uh, documentary films have two uh, different kinds of uh, style one is uh, narrator based the other is uh, without the narrator you see the film understand yourself 
without uh, the aid of uh, a narration. So my film, uh, Third Theatre, also did not have a narration. It is only about uh, uh, theatre and uh, without narration, even you saw that, you understood uh, the whole thing about it, about uh, what the Third Theatre is and uh, its dynamics. <clears throat> Similarly, in uh, Alpana Vishnamurthy also, there is no narrator's voice as such. You understand everything through so many people associated with him and uh, by listening to his uh, uh, music that is played from time to time to uh, qualify the kind of musician is being as is being talked about in the film. <clears throat> That's how it is. So I, I don't think that it is a break from uh, maybe each film is different. Uh, for instance, if you want to make a film for um, some people, then it will have to be more explicit. I think the film, the concept uh, decides the style. Uh, I, do, I do not uh, have one particular style and I follow it in all the films. It's not like that. Mm. Okay. I adapt myself to various uh, kinds of uh, this thing. Mm. When, I, when I made the film on Bharati, uh, it was a narrat narration based film because um, uh, there's no way of uh, uh, telling everything because the person was dead and gone so many years ago. And, uh, and so many, a lot of material was there. And I had to go uh, to all the places from where he was born in Ataburam and where he went to Benares. And then he came back to Chennai. To all these places I went, to. these were all visual things. But alongside, I had to say so many things uh, which could be said only through narration. <clears throat> And uh, regarding the uh, documentary filmmaking in Tamil mm -hmm. Nadu, uh, 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 a person like you or Ravi Subramanian or uh, others have made films about personalities and they are really, uh, 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 they get very good support and appreciation in Tamil Nadu because you, there have been many films about writers uh, you know, uh, so how, how do you look at this filmmaking filmmaking on personalities and uh, how that uh, when, you, when you compare with other films uh, made in Tamil Nadu, uh, films about personalities get more appreciation and support and why is it so? That is because uh, in Tamil Nadu, if not in the whole of India, uh, the, you don't have a pan uh, documentary audience. The, the audience who are ready to uh, see and appreciate any kind of uh, documentary film, provided it is good. Not that the kind of you, the audience sector is segmentized. For music, some audience. For art, some audience. From biography, for some audience. So if you tell them is, is a documentary on a writer, uh, people associated with the literary world only come and see it. And if it is a film about music, only musicians come and see it. If it is a film about uh, a sculptor, only uh, people from the art world come and see it. Or if it is a film about a social problem, only people associate political aware, uh, socially aware, only those people come and see those films. Um, I think this is not happening in the West. This is not happening in Europe. It's not happening in other countries where they like documentary cinema as such, whether it is a bi biography, or whether it is about uh, a politically uh, sensitive uh, subject, or whether it is about an artist, they can't see it. They want to judge it how the documentary is made because documentary has, has uh, so many things to say which the future film cannot, will not, does not. So that way they, they have but a captive audience for uh, um, in, in a huge number in uh, other parts of the world. The, the first uh, film itself is a documentary. You know? they, um, the uh, Louis August Brothers film, uh, the first film, Arrival of the Train, things like uh, cinema was born with the documentary. But uh, here in uh, India, cinema, the documentary cinema is I mean, something which we uh, do not uh, see it as proper cinema. This, uh, so many people, uh, before I started making the feature film, I made two feature films before I made it. So many people asked me, how long are you going to make uh, only documentaries? When are you going to make uh, feature films? I got uh, upset with my decision that I was making only documentary films. So I th they thought that uh, it was a setback in my career, in my life, that I'm making only documentaries. 
but uh, 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 says uh, Anand Patwardhan is making only documentaries. He has made only 15 documentaries. He has not made a single feature film. There were so many opportunities for him to make a feature film. In, in fact, uh, the Bandit Queen uh, film was first given to him. He refused to make it. Then only then the Shekhar Kapoor took it and made it. So that is the case. Like that, so many people in the West, uh, they are only documentary filmmakers and they don't go to feature films at all. That kind of a culture is very much lacking here. And that is the why we don't have a, a sizable audience for a documentary. So based on what you are, if it is a Dalit um, uh, subject, then the uh, Dalit uh, activists come and see that. If it is about something else, they do. It's like that. It's not that they want to see a documentary as such, understand and appreciate and learn. So that is, I think, is uh, what is lacking here. The culture of uh, uh, documentary viewing is lacking very much. That's what I think. <laughs> okay. Coming to this particular film, uh, Tavil, if I am not wrong, Tavil uh, 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 music is pr mostly played by, if I am not wrong, mostly played by non brahmins Yes, that's true. That's true. Um, but Tavil... Uh, and uh, how that whole Tawal uh, music uh, uh, music is uh, given the respect in Tamil music world, you know, when you look at music, there is a, there is also Mirdangam, it is also a percussion instrument. It is a, there is also Tawal, it is also a percussion instrument. But how? These both instruments, instruments are given importance and not given importance. How do you compare the way we look at the instruments and the culture behind it? Yes, yes. As you rightly pointed out, uh, there is not a single uh, Brahmin who plays on the Tavil. Uh, even uh, Muslims play on the Narasuram, uh, Sheikh Sina Maulana, but Brahmins have not touched that instrument, Narasuram. Narasuram is called the uh, Periya Madam. That is only the preserve of uh, non brahmins And again, among non brahmins a particular section of the uh, society, they are uh, been practicing it and perfecting it. And uh, at the same time, uh, they are not sidelined because uh, Tavil and uh, Navasuram they are play, played in the uh, temple. The temple is a temple music. So they cannot uh, easily do away with that kind of music. They need it for. Uh, for all the performances, for all the pujas, for all the processions, they need uh, Tavil and Nadaswaram. So uh, they, they have got uh, every important place. They talk about a very important place. Even though they don't play it, uh, there is very much uh, important for them to conduct their uh, uh, processions, uh, to conduct uh, all the pujas and all that. So that way, Nadaswaram and the strange list, so many other things which uh, the non Brahmins only do in the, uh, this thing. Even Devadas says they were not Brahmins, but they were, but because of the temple culture, they were given importance in those days, like that only. So uh, I think uh, whether you are a Brahmin or non Brahmin, um, uh, even, the, even though it was segmentalized, it was part of our culture because we needed them. Okay. So let me uh, uh, now invite our guest to ask a question to the filmmaker. Yes, I yes. think uh, we can start with Miss Sarika. Oh, sure. Uh, hello, hi, sir. So, I uh, was extremely impressed because, like you said, Tawil, when the, you know, it's it's not played by everyone and how they are looked at, some of them who actually played, right now. So, um, but I've loved Tawil music. Then to say you listen, it actually reaches your heart. So you know that the way you started off the film, it was very beautiful. And you know, usually we only listen to it while they play. But our mother, you know, when they speak it out, that, that was really beautiful. And I've never known about Yalpanam, uh, the Chiramurti sir. And uh, this was definitely an eye-opener. Uh, musically interested, but not to the extent of like, I don't explore like this. This was this was really good. Sir. So you took it here, you also took it in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, you went over? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I took it here because um, uh, as I had uh, established in that film, uh, Alpana Dachshamurthy was a bridge, was an ambassador of music uh, between Sri Lanka and uh, India, in uh, Tamil Nadu to be particular. And I uh, used to frequent, uh, see in those days, 
Um, musicians from Sri Lanka used to come to India to learn music. And like that, um, uh, people from here uh, would go there to play, to win the appreciation of the audience in Sri Lanka. But uh, in um, uh, many walks of life and many things, um, the Tamil um, personalities, uh, they were ruling the roost, whether uh, they are writers, poets. Um, there are writers and poets in Sri Lanka. But uh, only we have, we used, I mean, the Tamils in the Tamil Nadu, they used to boast that we only we have Bharati, only we have Pudumipitan, only we have Janaki Raman. Well, of course, you have other people, but we, we are, um, we had our fathers, which was also true uh, to a certain extent, um, uh, and not true to, to, to in, in other aspects. But anyway, this bias was there. But when the Arpan Dachamurthy came and played in uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, people were uh, awestruck by his uh, mastery, by his virtuosity. And there was uh, no way of saying that uh, we Tamils in Tamil Nadu um, uh, are uh, better than the um, uh, Sri Lankan musicians. Because Alpan Dishamuthi towers over everybody. Okay. For the first time, I would say that a Sri Lankan musician is accepted as a, a pioneer in Tamil music. Even though um, Tanjavur is a place where uh, Tamil is... Uh, a real where it is, uh, I mean, um, always uh, given so much importance because of so many temples here. First time they, they couldn't uh, um, negate, I mean, they couldn't uh, uh, sidestep uh, his mastery. They had to accept it. So that was it. And um, uh, many people here in the film, they have openly acknowledged Aridwaram, Padani Velu, Tirwala Puttur, Kaliyamurthy, and uh, Tanjavur Tyagarajan, and so many others. These three people who are saying it, I mean, uh, they come out uh, okay that uh, they owe their uh, mastery to the influence of uh, Arpan Dachamurthy. So many others also have said similar things. So, um, so I wanted to start from here because these people accept Arpan Dachamurthy. These people have not accepted any other person from Sri Lanka. The first time they are accepting it. And then I went to Sri Lanka, um, um, uh, I mean, the, the birthplace, you know, Will, and uh, in Nalavati, there is a statue of uh, the Tamil Dashamurthy. Uh, you're seeing it in the film. There's only one uh, uh, statue for a Tamil with one the whole world, that's for the Alpana Dashamurthy. So, in so many ways, in, uh, I mean, the, to this day, the people in uh, Yarpanam, people in uh, Nalavati, you know, Will. They river him. They, it's like uh, uh, what we think of MGR here. Their MGR is uh, Alparam Dishamurthy. That kind of uh, reverence, respect they have for him. That way, I think I had to unite uh, both the things. But uh, it was very tough getting uh, the permission to shoot uh, Alparam Dishamurthy because at that time, I went there uh, in 2010 to shoot that film. And the uh, Mullivakal and all that uh, only a year ago had taken place. Um, uh, so they, they did not want to give me permission. They didn't uh, believe in the first place that I was going to Sri Lanka to make a documentary on uh, a Tamil player. They thought that I was having interior uh, designs to go there to make a, uh, this thing, but uh, I was making a film about something else. So they thought, they thought like that. So after a lot of scrutiny, uh, they gave me the permission. Even after giving the permission, when I entered uh, uh, Colombo, and they stopped me in the airport. They did not allow me to go inside. They imported my passport. Or something. They have given you, you know, the permission, but uh, now we are rethinking about whether to allow you inside. Then uh, so I was there for about uh, from 10 o'clock up to 4 o'clock. I was kept in the airport. I was not allowed to go inside. I was not even to go to the canteen to have my lunch because they thought that I would somehow run, run away like that. Um, so after four o'clock only they allowed me. And then we went and there was an officer with us. All the 10 days of our shooting, he was with us every, even um, uh, when we ate or slept, he was with us like that. That way the film was made. Okay, uh, okay, sir. You know, I uh, don't really have much. We really appreciate the movie. Thanks a lot. Okay. It's a good documentary film. Yeah. Mr. Amshukumar, uh, 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 
and you just elaborate your experience in sri lanka while making this film of course you touched upon that topic mm. but how was it when you are uh, you know uh, in terms of security in terms of uh, uh, the life post uh, 2009 uh, you know uh, one year we you went there so yes. how was the whole experience of shooting that film it was very tight because i was uh, taking my camera man with me and um, the camera equipment was there my uh, assistant was also there cameraman was also there so, so all the people went uh, in the van from one place to another and they had to travel so many places from colombo they had to go to uh, yalpanam and uh, again inside uh, yalpanam uh, you know will adavedi the places uh, he was associated with we had to find people and uh, all the time we were uh, people i um, mean the police and the military they were very suspicious of our activities i told you that i was uh, debarred from entering uh, uh, colombo airport uh, because in spite of uh, at the time rajapakshe was uh, the um, uh, president as he is now and rajapakshe's uh, brother kotabaya rajapakshe he was the defense minister there and kotabaya rajapakshe um, i mean here the um, sri lankan high commission had given me the permission and uh, they had also contacted the national corporation of sri lanka and the permission was granted because they, they after getting my application they went to the places um, where alpan uh, darsham were lived and also they spoke to the people whether this, this person is coming whether he is genuine whether he is coming only to make a film on um, the musician or whether he is having some other design because at the time Uh, channel 4 had uh, shown a film uh, about uh, the atrocities genocide of uh, sri lanka and uh, that had, uh, i mean uh, put alpan uh, i mean uh, um, rajapakshe government in a spot they exposed him the un um, i mean cut hold of the visuals and they wanted to proceed against him but of course uh, nothing has happened now that's another thing up until the time rajapakshe's fate was uh, hanging in the balance because of that single documentary i tell you the document the power of documentaries as uh, channel 4 had shown the genocide in uh, gruesome details so they were very wary of uh, documentaries supposing that i had show, told them that i am going to make a film a romantic film in sri lanka they would have willingly allowed me because there is no hassle about it but uh, the documentary the very word uh, was bugbear for them that uh, i was going to do something uh, against uh, them so they were very very incautious about uh, the whole thing and uh, they wanted uh, some out to block it and kotabaya rajapakshe it seems had spe- given specific instruction and not all of me inside that i learned only when i landed in the colombo airport i got it uh, from the immigration officials and uh, there's no way of uh, i mean then i spoke uh, to the sri lankan high commission in chennai and then through them to foreign uh, affairs in uh, colombo so all these things were happening between 10 and 4 o'clock a lot of hectic activities are going on and finally they were convinced some of they were convinced and they let me inside but uh, as i told you during those 10 days uh, one uh, there was again that person's name was uh, rajabakshe um, that officer in uh, sri lankan corporation he was uh, sh- shadowing me and everywhere they didn't allow me to do anything practically um, and he was uh, there during the shooting he was there when i was having my breakfast lunch and he slept next to my room <laughs> so that kind of a vigil was there it was very i think i, I, I was uh, annoyed and at the same time also enjoyed it uh, because that man poor man is going through so many difficulties then finally and they gave me a clean set because all the 10 days i had not met uh, anybody and uh, and i had done only this film but uh, uh, in uh, they were not very political activities but i went and met my friends who were associated in some way or other with the uh, political uh, situations there so to understand all that so it was very tough that's how uh, i made it and uh, um, uh, the i saw a lot of uh, depredations on the landscape there were so many churches which were torched so many villages that were raised to ground and we were going on the, the 
vehicle was allowed to apply only on the arterial roads and they had cleaned that for the uh, foreigners to, supposing the foreigners wanted to come and inspect, wanted to uh, give their verdict about uh, the state of affairs that is prevailing in Sri Lanka. So they had cleared uh, the particular uh, routes, the main routes, and once you um, take a turn and uh, go inside the village, uh, the, the reality would be very horrifying. They wouldn't allow you to go. They would only allow you to pass through the main road, uh, which is somewhat uh, a sanitized uh, version of uh, the um, Sri Lanka. Once you deviate and go to some other area, then the horrific truths will be there. I, I managed to go to a few places in uh, Mulivakal, where these things, Prabhakaran uh, and all that, I went there. Uh, it was like a desert. It was like a desert. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Uh, let me invite uh, Mr. Ramdas, filmmaker, yes. to give us comments or questions. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hi, sir. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's very interesting to hear you. Uh, basically, I didn't have much connect with the subject which you are dealing. Uh, so that disconnect is there, but it's very interesting to listen to you, your experiences, your this film. And it's a very wonderful film to be, I mean, as uh, Mr. Amutin pointed out, it's a very developed film. So as a I mean, person who doesn't have much connect about the subject, also very easy to understand. So that, uh, I mean, that is very cool. Uh, I just wanted to listen to you from uh, more about the film society movements in Tamil Nadu, because you have a very strong base and background of this film society movements. So you, are, you said uh, that you developed with the film societies, you are... Uh, entry to the film is also through film societies. Yes. So, what is the uh, the? I mean, how the movement? Uh, I mean, what is what? I mean, how it happens? So, what is mo the? Is it moving forward in the? So, the present situations uh, because I am also connected with so many film societies in Kerala. So, it's happening. So, but uh, the present situation is very. I mean, the film societies activists activities has been. I mean, no stopped because of some uh, recent issues. So, how it is going to develop, and what is your, I mean, perspective about the film society's movements in Tamil Nadu? I just want to know more. Tamil Nadu, the first uh, film society was started in Chennai, called the Madras Film Society, and it was started by one uh, Amu, and she met uh, Satyajit Roy uh, some time ago in the 60s, I believe, and um, uh, you know, Satyajit Roy was the first. Uh, person to start the film society in uh, India, in Calcutta. Uh, you know, he was uh, very familiar with uh, um, uh, the film society movements elsewhere in the world. And he was a scholar by himself. He, he, before he came to make Patar Panchali, he had known so much about uh, cinema, international cinema. He had seen uh, Bicycle Thieves and all that in London. Based on that, he came to make films and, and he had a very rich experience even before joining cinema. <clears throat> and he started the first uh, film society in Calcutta Film Society along with uh, Chidananda Daskupta, you know, Aparnasan, Aparnasan's father, Chidananda Daskupta. They all uh, floated it. At the time, this Amu from here, she went to um, Calcutta and met him. And why don't you have a film society here? And that way they started that Madras Film Society. It was functioning until quite recently. The first film society in uh, <clears throat> Tamil Nadu. Then uh, the second film society was started in Tirichi. It's called the Cine Forum. That is to which I, I belong. Uh, from the, almost from the beginning, I'm in the film society because it had uh, the backing of academicians. And um, it was started uh, by uh, people like Albert, and uh, other um, uh, academicians, they had a good, uh, I mean, um, uh, the welcome spread towards uh, good cinema. And that's how they were knowledgeable. And that's how the film society was uh, started in uh, uh, Trichy, <clears throat> the second film society in uh, Tamil Nadu. Afterwards in Madurai, um, uh, other uh, uh, society was there. There was also Roy Film Society. Of course, the Zatta Rajan passed away only recently. Uh, like that in uh, other places, Coimbatore, um, Namakkal, E Road, like that, so many film societies came up, but uh, they are all the actively, only academicians, writers, 
only these people were involved uh, no patronage from film industry and no patronage from government government did not subsidize any of the activities of the film societies because in those days film societies have to be shown only through the theaters they had to be shown only through projectors and they had to depend on uh, film halls that is in the theater and for the theater to show these films they should show some concession but the government was very afraid of the film society movement and they didn't understand what this film society movement is all about and they did not in any way appreciate or give them any sort of concession and they also wanted to have the entertainment tax for this kind of films which i was very Um, ridiculous because these films are not ticketed and these films are given only to shown to only the members who pay only only paltry sums for 60 rupees or 100 rupees for the whole year like that and most of the films we get only from the uh, for free from national film archives pune and from embassies uh, because the embassies uh, they want to show the films from their countries in order to popularize their uh, a culture culture of their countries so that's why they gave the films uh, free and all we had to do is to um, uh, have the theater to rent the theater hall and then uh, uh, project of course only for things really we needed money it was a non profit uh, uh, organization the film societies but the government did was not in the, any mood to understand uh, that these film societies are showing only films meant to foster film culture so they were against it and because of that uh, there is no this thing and uh, only on the strength of uh, people um, who had uh, developed contacts with the uh, film organizers film society organizers because they were good so they uh, thought they could join the film society there was no harm in joining film society because it is run uh, the secretary is uh, some professor or some uh, lecturer or some well known person who has uh, um, i mean uh, good ranking in the society so like that they joined and also the little magazine uh, uh, culture in tamil nadu the, that also they gave, gave some uh, lot of in, importance to this kind of films they wrote about a uh, true far they wrote about uh, chicago they wrote about uh, um, uh, malayalam films kannada films uh, bengali films so whenever they saw people saw it and uh, wrote about it very enthusiastically and uh, they showed that uh, there are uh, cinema which is parallel to mainstream cinema so it was all uh, out of interest and out of uh, um, devotion to another culture another kind of cinema that is how the film society movement was functioning in tamil nadu <clears throat> yeah how it is moving forward sir i mean what is the present i mean present we don't have many film societies there are film society a few film societies there is one um, icf uh, here uh, international cine appreciation forum this year and uh, they have not only showing films they also conducted film festivals for about 14 15 years mm-hmm. i think 15th or 16th year now they have been showing international film festival that way it is uh, very big leap they have attained from film society to uh, international film festival organizing so but that is uh, only one uh, and uh, one or two like that yeah, says uh, if this film society then abudan is also a film society man abudan is uh, dedicated uh, documentary cinema uh, film society is running and uh, i think the first time that uh, in uh, tamil nadu a yeah, film society which is entirely um, showing only documentaries and showing documentaries um, around the year conducting um, um, festivals almost every fortnight is having one kind of festival or another so and is bringing a lot of films from all parts of the world from all parts of india um, so like that only very few film societies not many because people now think that uh, um the, because the one thing which united people one uh, to form a film society is 
the availability or the non availability availability of good films um, uh, through only film societies and uh, the non availability of films otherwise so that made people to br- come under the um, this thing umbrella of uh, film societies now there is no dearth for uh, um, films name a film and is available youtube or you can download it from some other uh, website so there is no necessity for people to come and uh, um, see a film in the film society screenings so the film society screenings have uh, one great advantage is that people uh, gather there and they uh, discuss it, discuss cinema uh, which is uh, lacking now people see so many films now every day perhaps uh, some person is seeing a film but uh, does he talk about uh, that film does he think about that film does he discuss about that film with another person no it does not happen it is a, it is a sort of entertainment just two hours every day you see a film every fortnight every friday you see a new film and forget it write about it uh, um, in your facebook or something like and forget it uh, move on to the next film that's how it is which was not the case when the film societies uh, we used to see the same film over and over again so many times because the nuances of a film um, will not be uh, got in a single viewing you have to see a film multiple times to understand what the filmmaker is trying to say does the filmmaker has put in his entire life in his um, making of films his entire philosophy his entire ideology is there in that film and it comes through every shot for that you'll have to wait and see you cannot just see it in one and a half hours and get out and say that you have seen it and move on to the next film that kind of culture is very much the kind of uh, not culture that kind of uh, the reality is very much here the film society culture uh, i think is still we need it because we have to sit together discuss um, learn from what others have seen by themselves so that way uh, my uh, viewing the film is my interpretation of the film your viewing of the film is your interpretation of the film i have to learn so many things i there is so much to learn from you as a viewer between viewers you have to learn so many things that is not happening now thank you sir okay can i invite uh, mr killy thank you yes. for inviting me uh, to this discussion uh, audio is so audio is very low can you just uh... hello uh, hello yes sir. now we can hear yeah yeah good morning how are you fine <laughs> fine uh, thank thank you mr amman for inviting me to this discussion uh, i really enjoyed the film uh by making this film i think that you have actually introduced many tamil players who are not uh, <laughs> uh, uh, known uh, to this tamil world itself you leave out the rest of pan india even to the tamil uh, uh, population i don't think so many of them would have heard about these uh, tamil players so they they know more about uh, violin and other music instruments tamil and nadasram are always been uh, are not on the uh, popular front as uh, other instruments are uh, because it is predominantly as you said it is to do with the temple culture and the uh, uh, and the and the uh, and also the uh, the cultural space it acquires in weddings and other aspects but not as a as a divine music or something like that so there is a that that's one important uh, uh, aspect i think uh, dachna muti has broken yes i think he's a path uh, breaker in that way by breaking the tradition of uh, being uh, uh, uh playing the same uh, traditional music uh, and we maybe we can equate him to subramanya bharati in literature completely breaking away from the classical tradition and uh, providing a completely a different uh, tradition altogether to be followed by several other tabla players uh, down the line uh, in that way and that uh, uh, and mostly uh, legends board don't live long <laughs> is died at such an young age uh, at 42 Yeah. so uh, 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 what uh, i feel is that he's just not a tamil player i mean yeah. uh, he was so knowledgeable that he can even talk about pandit ravi shankar whom i think uh, 
that generation would not even known uh, in uh, most of the people would not have known of pandit ravi shankar yes, when he speaks of pandit ravi shankar i mean he is just not a tamil player he is is more knowledgeable than that uh, even uh, during the course of your film uh, the the one of the uh, musical uh, one of the uh, tamil players uh, in, says that he he actually touches by finger to find the uh, uh, sound of that uh, uh, side uh, Uh, whatever the skin or whatever it is Now, unlike the other tamil players who do it with the stick so okay. he 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 has that uh, exceptional knowledge about the skin about the sound about the clarity and that is what i think made him very distinct from the other tamil players he was more knowledgeable uh, and he could he could perceive uh, the uh, musical sense even before it is played Uh, i think that is what made him very distinct from the other tamil players of his contemporary uh, period uh, thank you for bringing this wonderful film uh, uh, you you narrated your uh, sri lankan experiences <laughs> uh, i too had a similar kind of one uh, when i traveled uh, leo on that uh, so uh, thank you for bringing this wonderful film because i i think uh, uh, most of them uh, would be uh, would not uh, even known his name uh uh, uh uh before this film i think yes, uh, and and uh, it is it is very uh, even i was uh, not aware that he his his ancestral uh, home is basically from tanjavur district so uh, that was that was an interesting aspect uh, to be seen and the kind of cultural relationship that the sri lankan tamil population and the Uh, Tamil Nadu population had uh, prior to independence or uh, even in 1950s and 60s is quite striking. Uh, I, I think uh, that has to be regained uh, through these art performances, uh, and your film actually kind of proposes that kind of an uh, uh, that kind of an spirit into the uh, population. I think. Thank you very much for the film. Okay. Yeah, I want to tell you one thing with, in connection with what you have said because you said. Uh, the the shamuti um, had a feel of the tamil and uh, unlike other people see at the time uh, i was making this film um, uh, there was one uh, event the uh, amjad ali khan you know is a famous sarod player in india and he was traveling from one place to another and uh, his sarod instrument he had put it in the cargo and by the time he i mean uh, there was some um, problem the connectivity of uh, this uh, travel and uh, it seems he boarded another uh, the thing and uh, his uh, gargo the um, uh, his sarod went in, uh, in another direction uh, it was not traceable for some time and he lost his uh, sleep because he was living with that instrument for 40 years and suddenly that instrument is gone means he thought his music was gone but with the chamati it was not like that he didn't travel with his um, uh, tabel just went with his drumsticks and passport and they took any drum from the world any temple and he coaxed it to play whatever he wanted for no sentimental kind of uh, this thing to us um, his instrument It's because uh, ravi shankar or ramjit telegan or anybody you take the violinist they hold on to their instrument they cuddle them they don't want to leave it they don't even want to even to give it to their shishyas to Uh, carry it. That kind of uh, this the attachment there. But this man is so, so modern, so different, a rebellious kind of a person. That is one thing. And another thing, um, which um, I mean, as a documentary filmmaker, uh, my uh, chief uh, this thing grows is that uh, he had lived up to the 1960s. <clears throat> he didn't die in the same when I made the documentary on Bardi. Um, uh, i had only some five photographs of bardi because bardi was a fugitive and uh, there were um, not too many photographs at that time at that time so there were only few photos with that i could make whereas this man was living in 1960s and we have uh, films and we have this uh, um, film culture we have all the film studios in uh, um, tamil nadu all studios but nobody had uh, A short Alpanam Dasham Murthy. Nobody had shot Alpanam Dasham Murthy. Even over, over ten seconds of Alpanam Dasham Murthy's uh, drum beat was not available. How he played with his fingers. So that we, so we are so poor in documentation. 
you are you are making 100 films a year but not even uh, one reel about uh, our uh, musicians so many people so many uh, um, writers we don't have any this thing we don't have anything of mauni of uh, jani raman nothing practically so many leaders we don't have, we have not whereas the in the west they immediately make uh, the moment they um, the, the cinema technology came into their domain they started uh, recording they started recorded um, i mean jaj uh, bernard chai is recorded leo tolstoy is recorded everybody is recorded but we, we have not done it we had to approach somebody like uh, um, second academy to make a film so that kind of thing and so many people have lost now because of video now because we carry with us the cell phone uh, all of us are uh, recorded in somewhere or another we are all in some marriage or somewhere and we, our footage is somehow available but it was not like that until the 70s so we lost so many of them so that was my big complaint why we failed to make uh, uh, even uh, 10 seconds of yarpar uh, of dachramurthy's uh, concert I, i made a film for about this is a shorter version that you have seen 10 6 minutes and there is another version 110 minutes version but 110 minutes i have not shown darpar uh, dachramurthy is uh, playing the instrument i have shown only his recording you have to see how this man was beating his drum you know it was also a visual experience for so many people who was watching his performances because whole villages uh, thronged to listen to his performance he talks about uh, that uh, tanamanadu performance <clears throat> there was performance he gave in tajau district before he went to sri lanka and died and uh, that, that was in uh, tapakulam this thing a tank so many people uh, were there and they listened to his uh, music so all that uh, they could have done it uh, nobody our film industry people should have done it because they had the camera they had the equipments they did not want to do this thing make any films for uh, so that shows the apathy it was a documentary cinema that uh, we are still having it still we think that documentary cinema something is uh, on the way side and we do not have to bother about it that kind of a thing that was uh, really painful for me when i made this documentary yes adding, adding to it i i think uh, dakshina murthy is not uh, of uh, personality who belong to the real uh, musical tradition uh, Uh, because he, I think he is—he—he uh, he was completely a modern man. I—I I read in one of the interviews, I think, mm. like riding bikes and cars at. Mm. Yeah, yeah, in the film also. Yeah, uh, uh, I, mean, I think he has also played the Tamil with that great speed. That's yeah. what even these, all the other Tamil players are actually referring to. His speed was phenomenal. I mean, uh, nobody could compete with his hand speed that he used to make with with absolute clarity in his all his uh, swarams and other things. so i think he was not a kind of a typical musician of that period in the 1940s and who were very traditional having uh, a, a, a kind of uh, norms and regulations who they pre- followed and prescribed but he was completely away from all those traditional values and kind of had a modern uh, system that's why i think he was he is completely distinct from other tavil players of that period thank you thank you so much thank you samshukumar i just want to ask you like when you are making a film about a musician especially after you mentioned that uh, uh, there was no not a single video or when very few photographs uh, of him so when you when you want to make a film about a musician and uh, how will you you how will you make a music film like how would you combine music uh, cinema is a combination of both audio and visual part Yes. when you make a film about music hmm. how, how do you uh, uh, you know like for because there are there, there are interesting scenes in the film hmm. uh, what there's one sequence in which you are asking a person to perform a particular hmm. uh, style so the, the one person is performing like uh, dakshinamurthy number one number two there's another on another occasion you have used uh, an audio graph to explain how his music uh, uh, you know uh, actually uh, for, like you are actually helping the audience to visualize the music yeah you know? so how did you come up with these ideas of making a visual film of a music i uh, just i was uh, telling clearly uh, that uh, i was hamstrung by this uh, this thing that i don't i didn't have the um, actual footage of uh, the uh, musician 
that is a very big disadvantage. But uh, having uh, known that we are uh, working with the disadvantage, what else to do? They have to make uh, the film. They have to uh, tell people what uh, Yarpanam Dushamut is about uh, through video, not by making uh, writing another book. Because um, uh, we have excellent uh, audio, and uh, audio can be um, conveyed only through a film, not through a book. So the, you have got a very strong material. Film is audio visual. You have 50 part of it, and not the other 50 part, uh, which is visual. That that is lacking. So I had to compensate it with the peer interviews of people who knew him well. So that I had to do. That way, I think uh, I managed it. And had he lived now, or had I been a filmmaker at that point of time, the whole thing would have been very different. But what can we do? Uh, I was also wondering uh, uh, while watching the film, um, there was, uh, as, a, as an audience uh, from India or an outside uh, Sri Lanka, would have wanted to see wanted to see more of Sri Lanka in the film, you know, like Jaffna, like the roads and the streets and the ponds, the rivers and the paddy fields, where uh, Rakshana Musti would have walked and spent time. And uh, I was wondering why you couldn't have much visuals of Sri Lanka. If you can, if you can recall very few visuals uh, there outside the home or in, what, what was the reason? Do you think the only political reasons? No, no, no. Political reasons were there. But I was associating the places only where uh, he lived and where uh, in the temple were. No, if you see that 110 minutes, perhaps there are some more visuals. And the 36, you don't have that kind of visuals uh, because he, he had played in a particular uh, temple and all that. So that temple visual is there. Um, but uh, I think uh, most of the time he played in um, India also. Not only in India, he played in uh, other places, he went to um, Malaysia, he went to Singapore, he went to all the places. So finally, not the place, but his music. I think that mattered most. So I didn't uh, show much of Sri Lanka, only the places uh, where he was born and where he lived. His house is uh, shown in that film. Mm. I limited myself only to that. Okay. And uh, uh, my Sri Lankan visit was uh, used to meet people uh, who knew uh, Arban Dashamurthy first hand, who had uh, listened to his uh, music in the concerts. So that way uh, I, I utilized uh, my visit uh, to meet people rather than to show people, uh, to show places because the places do not reveal much. Okay. <clears throat> we have a new guest, Mr. Sudhir. So... Yes. Can we invite Mr. Sudhir? Do you want to have questions, comments, Mr. Sudhir? Yeah, thank you, Audan. Uh, I just watched the film uh, some time back, <laughs> half an hour back. Got time only this morning, so I'm joining late. Sorry, uh, I couldn't listen to all of you and your uh, and your uh, observations. But uh, what struck me is the uh, how do you say the subtitle uh, music uh, without uh, borders. I think uh, uh, maybe one of the uh, uh, problems that you encountered, uh, Amshan, as a filmmaker, yeah? a lack of, uh, you see, recorded material about the Darshan Murthy's uh, performances in the Soviet Union. Yeah. So, I think, um, in a way, on the on the on the Kalatalan, the Munga, the K, Mukyatahong, Kudukamla, Yirinda, the we have Mr. Ramdas who can't follow Tamil, so please speak. Okay, English. fine. I think that uh, at that time, the musicians who uh, uh, who performed or uh, you see were uh, were performing actively, uh, they were, uh, I think, uh, they were not uh, conscious about uh, having themselves recorded. Uh, not because the technology was not available. Uh, I think it was... Uh, Precisely because they, uh, how do you say, valued the, uh, you see, the act of performing in uh, in various, uh, you see, environments. You see, the exchange was perhaps the most, uh, uh, you see, treasured. So uh, the experience uh, of the uh, of the performance itself, in uh, especially the last performance that was um, highlighted in Tamil Nadu, 
uh, uh, on the on the uh, banks of a you see yes. tank irrigation tank you see where the water uh, you see yes. uh, set off certain uh, yeah, uh, i mean extremely virtuous virtu virtuous virtuous uh, you see uh, virtuosity in his playing yeah which was mentioned by parliament also um, uh, i'm feeling that i mean uh, what you said uh, amudan about uh, i mean uh, the uh, uh, the the how do you say the visual media not having recorded uh, you see places where this music uh, you see could have uh, could have drawn uh, you see inspiration from even though uh, tachna murthy may have performed uh, in several uh, prestigious uh, you see uh, platforms or, or uh, you see in in tamil nadu and he may have done less so in uh, in sri lanka yar panathil i'm not i'm not very uh, sure how that is uh, possible and our vandu whatever 20 years of uh, active uh, you see performance um of the must have been uh, you see uh, places and spaces in in yarpanam from which he drew his uh, music also you see and uh, which inspired that music uh, there is the connection with the, the muthumariyamman uh, you see and the koil and, uh, and the deity and his uh, basically Uh, he he feels very strongly that uh, the, the deity is the one who is uh, you see pushing him yeah to uh, break these uh, traditional boundaries of tradition yeah uh, 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 but, but i think um, uh, uh, i mean all of these uh, uh, symbols or uh, you see references to the deity to the temple definitely uh, how do you say um, uh, also refers to the land and to the to the people and to their practices you see i think it's extremely important that we uh, i mean uh, uh, emphasize this uh, aspect of uh, you see uh, of the power of music to transcend borders you see to strike uh, uh, to strike uh, you see bonds and to, to to cultivate bonds between people yeah and it's, it's especially tragic that uh, in today's uh, you see context uh, after all the upheaval uh, in sri lanka uh that uh, how do you say extremely regressive forces are again coming to the uh, fore yeah and they are talking about taking lessons from uh, you see the uh, bjp uh, bjp's election uh, whatever practices and strategies here yeah both uh, you see all over the world it's not just in sri lanka or in india you see all over the world you find that uh, is uh, supremacy supremacy of one culture uh, you see claiming that it is uh, you see uh, is hegemonic uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, place in that in that particular region yeah which denies this kind of cu uh, cultural uh, cross uh, fertilization or pollination which i think dakshina murthy uh, stood for you see so i i i i am i am thinking that uh, for them the priority was this active uh, you see exchange and performances across these borders rather than getting themselves uh, you see that uh, that their music was uh, you see could be contained within some kind of documentation or recording yeah uh, i feel that the uh, that was very uh, it's very important uh, i mean it, it 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 did come through in your film is it did come through in your film i think you intended also i mean in the in the title to convey that uh, you see that emphasis but i think we need to reinforce this uh, in wherever you get the opportunity to to screen it and to discuss it yeah the connection with the with people and the connection with place yeah uh, uh and again i think the, uh, the 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 last performance that they referred to yeah uh, is extremely uh, uh, evocative and signi signifies that uh, that bond you see how the presence of water see he was not playing there among uh, you see uh, learned musicians or uh, he was not catering to an audience who is uh, well versed in classical music adu or gramathil dhan vaascharan solli illa so to a village uh, audience he was playing but uh, the fact that uh, he could find uh, you see the, the 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 setting the environmental setting itself is something which so in many ways i think people and their environments you, it's very difficult to to to, uh, to split them you see they are uh, very closely into so i i would also have uh, like to see more of uh, yarpanam in the film maybe the longer version has uh, i'm not sure it does but this is what i felt when i watched it uh, 
Amshan. Very, uh, it was very, how do you say, invigorating to, to see, I mean, something from uh, 50, 60 years ago, you see, that you have, uh, uh, but very relevant today. Very relevant today. Thank you. See, there are two aspects about uh, recording. The one thing is, you cannot expect the musicians to record everything, uh, whatever, even in, I mean, live alone, uh, their uh, performances being recorded on film. Even audio recording, they, you cannot hold them responsible. But that is, recording is another activity which uh, the filmmakers have to do, which the audiographers have to do, which the other bodies, uh, governmental bodies, non-governmental bodies, uh, they have got to do. Uh, you can't expect the filmmaker, I mean, the musician to record, to safeguard everything. His, his duty is to perform. That's what he should do. He has done his duty. Others have failed in their duties. That's what I'm saying. So uh, only others have done. And again, you cannot expect all the time uh, a musician being recorded on audio or in film. See, uh, take for instance the case of Ravi Shankar. He had been performing in innumerable places. And uh, over, over uh, I mean, so, so many centers across the world. All his performances are not recorded on video. All his performances were not recorded on audio. So, the, so that is, it's not meant for uh, fully recording. Uh, for, uh, um, I mean, uh, to uh, create uh, records, to create uh, uh, this thing, files, video files or audio files. That is another activity. But that activity is completely lacking. That is what I'm saying. Uh, not that every... Um, um, act of uh, um, a musician, every act of uh, every theater activity has to be recorded. It is impossible. It is not meant for that, and they are not doing for that. They are doing it for live audience. But uh, every now and then, that has got to be recorded, and even that is no, not recorded. <clears throat> I like the uh, the Mariaman story is very. Uh, Really yes. wonderful story, like you know, like Mariam comes yeah. and wakes him up in the dream, and disturbs him, forces him to perform, practice, yeah. and create new things. It's a very interesting uh, aspect that we have included in the film, you know, like uh, how he, what kind of a person he, he was, uh, and the, and, the, and like I like the word India Vasam, <laughs> you know, yes. uh, India Vasam, yeah. and uh, it's a. And also, I like the way you have actually uh, in a, uh, asked uh, his son to enact, you know, like uh, <laughs> like uh, him, and they are explaining yes. him, you know, like uh, how does he, uh, how did he dress, how did he walk? And, yes, yes. So they were really interesting, very creative way of explaining yes. of a personality who never had a, a opportunity to be recorded, as you said. Yes. Very. These are all very. I. 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 That. That's what I. I wanted to tell you in the beginning also. Like you know, the the film has uh, actually it's a very well de well well developed. Uh, the film has a very well developed film language because it uses all all kind of techniques to uh, narrate the story of a person who is no more or who yes. passed away a long time back, and you're trying to bring out uh, the you know like and bring out the life of the person. Without, with only few photographs. Yes. It's a very... Later on, we collected a few more during the filmmaking. We, we, we contacted... At the end of the film, you see so many, so many photos. The beginning, I show only three, four photos. And in the, at the end of the film, see some uh, uh, 10 or 12 photos. Because during the course of the filmmaking, I have collected all of them and I put them at the end. Hmm. But again, that's all we have about him. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, I think we have covered a, a wide range of topics. If you, anybody has any questions, comments. Uh, Sarika, Ramdas. Uh, not really, but uh, thank you again, Samshan. Even though with that so little photographs and you know music and all those pieces, recording and things, I felt he was very much alive and. Yes, kind of be understood and yeah. they also brought out one book oh yes. oh nice okay. see uh, at the time of premiere we had uh, three materials one is film the other is um the um, recordings I, I told you 26 hours of recording we had collected to start with we had only two hours of recording at the time we finished we had collected so many photographs and so many 
um, uh, music recordings of uh, Arpan Dashamurthy that ran to close to 26 hours. And we had also contacted so many people who were associated with uh, Arpan Dashamurthy. We got articles from them. We pu um, uh, published one book. This is it. Very nice. Great piece. Mm. So one medium is creating more medium. Yes, yes. <laughs> Documenting. Uh, we are documented. One, who has published uh, this, Mr. Ashmin Shilmar? This book was published by the uh, Alpha and the Shamurti Foundation. Oh, oh, yes. If you want, I can uh, give you a copy. Oh, thank I'll you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I would also like to know, did he travel abroad, uh, outside South Asia, by any chance uh, to perform? No, no, he, he did not, he did not. He did not. He did not. Okay. If that would have happened, I think you would have been more popular. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> if you would have traveled to Europe, I think you would have been more popular than now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And more photographed. <laughs> Visual. Yeah, some, yeah. Some uh, foreign agency like BBC or somebody, they would have recorded uh, him live and uh, they would kept it in the library. But uh, halfway through the film, there was a rumor that one German uh, um, crew, television crew, uh, came and uh, they recorded uh, Yarpan Dashamurti live. And somebody told me, but I was, uh, after that, I could not get it. I, I mean, uh, not uh, German, but some uh, Zek, Zek agency. At the time, it was Zekoslovakia. And um, um, now we, we have uh, two countries, Serbia, Zek. So I wrote to these two embassies to find out if uh, there is any possibility of uh, um, any uh, clipping of uh, Arpan Dashamurthy, which they might have recorded and kept in their libraries. But uh, they did not respond. So I did that also. <clears throat> the other interesting part about the film is that because it's about one historical person, person mm -hmm. because it uh, and uh, the film also helps the audience to uh, go back historically. Yes. And uh, you know, and and uh, for an example, talking about uh, people coming from Sri Lanka to Madurai to watch a film, yes, the way people were, uh, you know, like shunting between Sri Lanka and India, yes, the, the way it was so. Uh, it was a reality. It was a. It was a norm. It was a common thing, you know, to just uh, go from here to there. Yeah. So it, it was the the film also helps audience to understand, especially the youngsters. Yes, yes. Because we we feel that we we feel that borders are permanent. You know, borders are there from the from the gods created the borders. You know, you know yeah. they can never be touched. Yeah, yeah. But suddenly you see the stories of people coming from Sri Lanka to watch film. Yes. Yeah, and go back in the night. Yes. You know. It was, it was that, yes, that cultural exchange was happening all the time. And uh, people in those days, even if they were not well versed in uh, understanding Carnatic music, they were intuitively uh, drawn towards Carnatic uh, music. So that's why when the Alpana Dashamurthy played uh, in the uh, Tank Festival there in, um, in the last uh, recital, uh, thousands of people had thronged that place. Why? Because they are intuitively drawn towards uh, Carnatic music. That kind of uh, uh, this thing they, they had, liking towards music, uh, something uh, it was more popular than film music itself. Uh, uh, now only Kanoshias understand Carnatic music, which was not the case then. Any, uh, there is uh, one uh, interesting anecdote about uh, uh, T. N. Rajaratnam Pillai, the famous uh, Nadaswaram master. <clears throat> um, uh, somebody asked him, um, "You have played in so many places." Um, and uh, so many people have listened to you. Who do you think is your uh, best Rasika? Who do you think is the one who understood your music in all its uh, uh, plenitude? Somebody asked him. He told me, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he told him that uh, in one of his recitals, at a particular uh, point, he played something very uh, sublime music and uh, somebody said, aha. It was a note which should be appreciated, and that was appreciated at that time by the text expression aha. And another uh, um, uh, uh, player, uh, Tien Rajaratnamalai, immediately stopped and looked at that side from where that appreciation came. One Bedramax uh, light uh, 
um, uh, I mean, uh, person who was lifting the Vedromax, he was uh, carrying that Vedromax light from place to place. He said that. It came from him, not from a conversion, not from a film, I mean, a music critic, but from somebody who everybody thought to not know anything about music. He, because he was always following this uh, musical concepts all his life by carrying the uh, Vedromax light. And he appreciated it. So uh, Raja Ratan Bhulay said, that was the best uh, um, uh, appreciation I got, ever got from a, a person who appreciated Carnatic music. So uh, music is something, is intuitive. See, in the film also, um, Alpananda Shamati is uh, so intuitive. That's why he says the goddess helped him. If he's, I mean, rational, if he thinks too much, then he would dis dissociate himself from all these things. He would um, try to um, explain creative process uh, differently. That's what uh, people do that now. Even uh, Ramanujan, the mathematician Ramanujan, he said that, that uh, he is a Namagiri, a Namakal uh, goddess, only helped him to, um, uh, um, I mean, uh, find out, I mean, to, he uh, gave all the uh, mathematical calculations, which even um, people like Hardy could not understand immediately. He himself, uh, Ramanujan himself could not understand all that. But he wrote all those theorems. He said it was uh, all divine inspiration. Inspiration. Namagri, uh, Amal from uh, Namakal, uh, the goddess. Uh, she only gave him the strength to uh, propound those theorems. That's what the explanation gave. You cannot explain uh, creativity like that. That's what uh, Alpana Dashamata also says. Alpana Dashamata says that it was a divine inspiration. The goddess asked him to play. He has no hand in that. So the, the, it was all same with the Rasikas. They themselves did not know why they appreciate because they were listening to it. They respond to it. That's how it is. I think with that a very philosophical uh, <laughs> note, I think we can close this discussion. Yeah. Uh, so thank you all yes. for coming and on a Sunday post Diwali and uh, with, despite having a, a very few numbers and uh, you did not feel, feel uh, disappointed or frustrated, you enthusiastically took part in the interaction. So thank you very much, Mr. Amshan Kumar. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. I'll thank just call everybody by name, Mr. Kimi, Ramda, Sarika, Mr. Sudhir. Thank you all for joining. So as, you, as I said in the beginning, we've been showing films per week per weekend. Every weekend we are showing a film and every weekend we have an interact with a filmmaker. So to the, today, this is the 23rd interaction. So we will be, in two weeks we'll be hitting the Silver, silver Jubilee and we will be celebrating it. So see you next week. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.